Hi, I'm David Walters, and welcome to another episode of Art in 30. Today we're going to be working on some birch trees. I like to do birch trees, and they can be done in a number of different ways. You only have to show part of the birch tree. Uh, this is another example. This piece takes a little longer, obviously, to get the detail in there. So today, we're going to just do something a little more simple because we're just going to accomplish this in 30 minutes. So we're going to use this smaller board and we're also going to start with simple tools and materials because anyone can get these materials. We don't want it to be an expensive process. You can get these uh, canvases at, a, at one of your local stores and we're going to be using just a couple of colors maybe four but basically black and white we're going to try to do a forest scene and we'll make it kind of a night scene this is a little more daytime but we'll make it just a little bit darker and we'll have a little bit of fun with that so uh, first of all I want to show you just a couple of examples of smaller pieces that are done this is one that I did fairly quickly and then I just to let you know that uh, you don't have to have a lot of experience to do these I want to show you a couple that were done by people for the first time. This is my uh, granddaughter. She's only 12 years old. And she said, Grandpa, show me how you paint the birch trees. So we sat down and we did that one in less than 30 minutes. And then m my son, he's older. He's in his 20s. But he wanted to do one. And we did this one again just within a few minutes. Uh, showing him the technique. So that's what we're going to try to do today. So let's start with our canvas. Now the mistake that I made as a, uh, when I was first starting out as an artist is uh, probably the mistake that most people make and that is uh, painting detail or the thing that you think of first. So if we're going to paint some birch trees, the common mistake to make is to paint the tree first. Makes sense actually. And then uh, to paint this birch tree, make it look real nice, and then start painting these background trees. And then the difficulty you run into is now you want to paint your sky. But it's very hard to paint a sky when there are things in front of it now. And you can see, especially if you have clouds coming across the entire sky, then you painted the painting in the wrong order. So after trial and error, I learned that you need to work from the back of your painting forward. So I always paint my sky and my landscape first, even though a lot of it will disappear uh, when the painting is finished. I want to work from the farthest thing I can see up to the closest thing. So let's start with our sky and our sky and our landscape, or land. We need to pick our horizon first of all. Oh, and I'll just explain. Another thing I like to do is the board is dry. This is a typical canvas that you can get anywhere. I like to just take my spray bottle and moisten the board. Now, of course, you get little drops on there, so you want to even those out. But this gets you loosened up and ready to paint, too, because you get to get your brush out and even out that water. So now my, my entire board is a little bit moist, and it's going to take my paint a lot better. The other thing is you want to be bold as an artist. I learned that, too. Um, a lot of people are timid and shy and, and, uh, and that doesn't help me at least to paint. I need to be bold and as soon as you make your first painting you're already ahead of probably millions of people who didn't dare pick up the brush and try it. So as soon as you paint a few paintings think of yourself as an artist and think of yourself as doing as much as, as uh, anyone else. What I like to do is apply my paint right to the board. Uh, again, that's a brave thing to do. I just put my paint right on the board. I'm getting lots on there. Now, I know my sky is going to end up being a little bit lighter than the ground, and so I'll apply a little bit of brown, or, uh, my darker colors down here at the bottom. Now, doesn't that look fun? To just put your paint right on the board? Then I'll take my brush, and sometimes I even give it a little bit more water, and now I'm just going to start to work that back and forth. And ooh, I already like it. It already looks like a 
kind of a winter scene, and you can see how easy that was to accomplish. I have my ground, and now I'll get some sky up in here and just rough that in like that. And there it is. Now maybe if I want to have a little bit of uh, contour to my landscape, you know, maybe I don't want the horizon to be completely flat, I'll just give it a bit of an angle like that. So we got a little bit of uphill. And now I brushed it too much, which is another mistake that we often make, is sometimes the first time you hit it, it looks better than it does later. So I'm just going to try that again. Just bring that up, leave some of it there, leave a little bit of dark. Okay. Okay, as I look at my sky, I like it, and it's even moving a little bit, which is kind of nice, but often, if it's, if it's morning and the sun is coming up, the sky is lighter at the bottom than it is up at the top. And in a sunset, that's also the case. Because the sun has gone down, the sky is a little lighter at the bottom than it is up higher. So I'm pretty even here, and I want to make the top a little bit darker. So I am going to use a palette and just get a little bit of dark paint out, work that into my brush a little bit, and I want this the sky up above to be just a little bit darker than it is down below. I have to be a little bit careful or my landscape down here is going to get as dark as the sky or the sky is going to get as dark as the landscape, which wouldn't matter too much. My paint is actually running here and I have to move it a little bit to keep it from looking like it, it ran there. So now I have some hills and valleys and I have my sky and it's just a little bit darker up above than it is down below. So I think I like that now. Okay, so now I have my background and I can add some details a little bit later. I can take a smaller brush and again, work that, that horizon maybe looks to me like it should be a little bit sharper. So I'll just take a little bit of paint and I'll just define that horizon just a little bit better. But again, I want to keep it it looks like I have a little hill in there. So I'll darken that up just a bit so that there's a little more contrast between the earth and the sky. Now I'm fairly happy. So now we want to start working forward. Well, this is actually, uh, we look like a desert or something now because we don't have anything there, but we're going to put some trees in. And we're going to start with some uh, evergreen trees as if we were in an evergreen forest and again the trees that are farther away tend to be lighter and as they get closer to us they get darker and sharper and they have more detail so as they're far away they don't have as much detail and we can use again simple materials just go to your little local store and get uh, the simplest brush you can find. These cost less than a dollar or a dollar or so. And so we're going to use those. And we'll mix up some grays. Again, I like to add a little bit of water. And I'm going to take my black and white until I can get some gray tones. I'll work that in a little bit. Now, we'll take a look at those. Yeah, they look like fairly gray. And we're going to start creating, with the edge of this brush, some trees that stick up. And as they get farther away, they're a little bit smaller. And I need more paint. Add 
find some more. This is fun to do. And again, we're not being very careful. I just want some gray. And that's not quite dark enough, so. I'm getting just the stalks of them in. Like that. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the trees that are farther away. Of course, no trees grow in the same height, but they do have a bit of a pattern. So those are some of my farthest trees, and they hardly even show up because they're going to be back behind some other ones. Oh, and I just saw how when I smashed my brush just a little bit harder, it made things that almost look like the little twigs or branches of an evergreen tree back there. So there, there are my, that's my most distant trees, and they're, they're almost imperceptible there. So now we need to start bringing, coming forward with some trees that are going to be a little bit darker. So, get our darker paint. Work that in just a little bit, and we're hoping to get some darker trees. Yeah, now I don't like that bump at the top. I want a point. So I'm going to do that by smashing the bottom of my brush a little harder, and the top barely touches. So then I start to get a bit of a point in the tree. And again, this is no fancy brush, as you can see. So it's more a matter of technique than it is equipment in this case. I'm having a little trouble with, the, I'm running out of paint is what's happening, so I'm going to switch uh, to a little larger tube of paint here, and I'll get some black and some white to work with. And I have to keep mixing this because remember we're coming forward in our scene, and as we come forward it's going to get a little darker and richer. So I need to darken my colors a bit as I work with it and just try them out and see how that's coming. Yeah. So again, I'm smashing harder with the bottom of my brush than with the top to get a little bit of a point there. And if you're too rough with it, then it looks silly, but you can always cover them up if you make some mistakes. That's the thing I like about it. So we'll get some coming forward, a little bit darker in there. Oh, there's a great mistake. Yeah, something's happening with my brush, so I'll work it around a little bit. Getting lots of good mistakes in there. And the beauty of this is that if my brush misbehaves too much, I didn't invest too much in this brush, and I can just trade it out for another one. I'm going to work with those until I get the tops of those trees behaving. Now, one of them bent over, and that made me think, well, wait a second, that's right. In nature, we certainly don't get a straight set of trees out in nature. One of them tips over, falls. So we're going to try to create a bit of that as we come forward with our trees. Of course, they have to get a little wider at the base also. And they're starting to look a little too patterned there. So we, we just keep thinking of it and making it look natural, as natural as we can, as we play with it and come forward. And work that right off the canvas. Because that forest just keeps going. It's not going to end there. So we'll work that a little bit. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, as I'm coming forward, I'm kind of losing my way in the forest. And I like to keep a bit of a path in there. As if something is, as if I could walk back into the forest there. So I'm going to work that just a little bit. And now, in my forest, I also have things that are more like bushes. So now we'll get rough with our brush and start to make some things that are darker and thicker and more bushes-like. We're going to bring some of those out here. And we can use, you can experiment with all of your brushes because different brushes will do different things for you. You play with them a little bit until we find something that, ooh, see, that looks a little more brushy. That looks like bushes out there. Now, as I get to the end of my bushes, they start to fade out, and they start to get a little bit smaller. So I'll let those bushes fade out a little bit. I'm going to keep this background because back, I'm walking back into the forest. Now, I come from this side, too. I'm going to, I'm going to need some bushes over here. So I'll give some of those. That brush is too small for me. So I'm going to get bigger because I'm going to have quite a few bushes down here, and I can detail them a little bit later. But again, remember what I said about being bold? Who would grab a big old paintbrush like that and think that they were going to paint something as small and detailed as a set of bushes? But that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just rough that in. Get my bushes going there. Something happened to my pathway there that I don't really like. So I'm going to get some bushes back there. But now as those bushes uh, fade back into the distance, and I'm working backwards a little bit because I wanted to keep working forward, but I didn't really like what was happening back there. So I have to rewind a little bit on my forest there. And at the base of these trees, it's thicker and bigger. So I want a little bit darker in there. OK, I'm getting more pleased with that as we come forward there with my bushes and trees. And now I'm almost at the point where I'm going to start really what we wanted to do. Remember when we started out, we wanted birch trees in our painting. And they're the most fun part, as far as I'm concerned. So all of this work that we're doing with the other trees are just background and secondary to the main characters in the painting, which are going to be these birch trees that will catch everyone's eye. And they're going to really focus on the birch trees, and they won't pay that much attention to the detail in the background there. So let's get to that point as soon as we can here. Get these a little bit darker. Now, as I come forward, I don't want to all of a sudden just have a white, snowy uh, kind of ground there. So I am going to have to do something a little different up front here, because some of my bushes are going to be right out front. and we. I, I really don't like that straight line that I have down there. So I need some bushes down here, but they are so close to me now that I might start to see a little bit more detail. So I'm going to put a little bit of brown into my palette, and maybe even the tiniest bit of green, which I hope no one will even really notice, but maybe subconsciously they'll know that there's a bit of green and brown going on. So I'm going to get some bushes in there that are a little bit green and a little bit brown. I'm working down here, but now my easel's in the way just a little bit, so I'm going to find something to prop this up a little bit. Maybe take this piece of wood. You have to improvise around your own studio 
until you get what you need. Now I think I can get to the bottom of that painting. I might hold it a little bit. So I am, I am introducing a little bit of brown and a little bit of green in there. But again, they're rough. And uh, oh, I like that. See, when I, I got a little bit of grassy looking action going there. So I'll go ahead and, oh boy, the more I do that, the more I like it. But remember, be careful. Don't start fooling around too much or you do something and you wish you would have left it when you first saw it. So that looks a little more natural because now there's something out front. Uh, this is kind of a nice little brush if I can find it. This little brush here, I like it. I don't know what it's called, but it probably has a fancy name. It's a thin brush spread out, and it does some fun things for your grass. So you can make a bit of grass appearing there at the bottom. We've got a little bit of green and a little bit of brown in there because it's close enough to our eye that we can start to see it. I'm going to just touch that a little bit, get a little more paint on that. And turn those into some grassies. Oh, I'm starting to like it even more. But remember, careful, don't fool around too much or you'll regret it. But I'll fool around a little bit there. I guess we shouldn't worry too much about our painting because guess what? If it doesn't turn out, we just grab another one and start right over because it's pretty easy to do. What I like to do is maybe a technique that I've developed myself because I'm lazy, or maybe it just uh, works for me, but I, and sometimes I do make a terrible mistake when I do this, but rather than dipping my brush into, the, into my palette, I'm going to think about my birch tree right now, and I'm going to paint it with this tube of paint for the most part. So the first thing I want to think about is kind of the composition of the, of the painting. And if you're familiar with photography or other composition techniques such as a rule of thirds, you can see that in the third of my painting, I, I have this kind of valley there. And I want to do the same thing with the birch trees. I don't want it to look too even. I want it to be thrown off center just a little bit because for some reason that makes it more appealing to the human eye. So in a way I've, I've got myself into trouble because I would like to have, and I want to have an uneven number when we're painting flowers or things, or uh, we, we do them in odd numbers rather than even numbers if we can. So I'm going to have one birch tree over here and maybe two over here on this other side. And um, the birch trees, if we remember back to our uh, larger painting that we took more time on, the birch trees are so close to our vision that we don't even see the top or the bottom of the tree in a lot of cases. We're standing out in the middle of a forest and we're so close to these trees that they're right in front of our eye. So that's what we're going to do here is get a pretty big birch tree right here. So it's going to take up the entire length or height of that, um, of our board. So I could do the other two, but I'm a little afraid to now. I think I'll just work on this one first. Now at this point, we can spread it out. And if you've purchased a, an, uh, from an art store, one of these knives, you can just pull the birch tree over like that and make it a little bit wider than your line of paint that you put on the board. But a lot of people don't have a knife. And so you can use some other things. If you look around your house, you'll probably find uh, a lot of handy guys have one of these or sometimes you have one of these laying around, or you can even use a credit card out of your wallet. But any, any piece that's flat will basically work. Now you have to be a little careful here because a tree obviously is pretty straight. And so you want your edge to be pretty straight. Now I hit a little bit of green paint down there that hadn't dried on my painting yet, but guess what, I like it because these birch trees do have a little bit of color in them. And so I can pull that like that. It's already starting to look like a birch tree. The other thing about birch trees is they uh, tend to have these black bark uh, patches. And they usually are a little more at the bottom than at the top. 
And so I'm going to apply some of those. And some of those are a little bit brown. So I'm going to just get a little bit of paint and add it into my birch tree there. But I'm not going to try to paint those uh, parts of the tree that have that black bark. And if I was more of a scientist, I could tell you what those are really called, but I'm not sure. And I'm, you can see I'm hitting them on the left-hand side of the tree. And you might think, well, that's odd. Why is he always hitting the left-hand side? And that's because I know what I'm going to do with my knife. I'm going to pull that paint across, too. Now, I don't push down too hard. I'm fairly light when I come across. And that creates kind of that birchy look. Now, these really birch trees don't exactly look like that. That's part of the beauty of painting, is that you can become your own creator, and you can make it the way you want it. So this last one here, I haven't done quite yet. And so now I have a clean knife. I'm just going to pull it across once. Now, I like that better because I have some nice, clean white, and it contrasts better with, this, with the bark down here. So I'll try that again there. I like that one better. Clean my brush each time. Yeah, see, that looks more like a natural birch tree to me. Not as much gray as in the other one. So you can play with your birch trees and experiment with them and have a lot of fun with them. I'm going to try to put a little more white in here. There we go. OK, so we're getting close to uh, finished. Of course, we can spend as much time on it as we want. and. The original that we looked at, you can see it has some dark branches. Now, they take longer to do. And so uh, I like to use a brush like this that can load up with a lot of liquid to make the branches. That was a little trick I found, is that that brush that has long hair will hold more fluid. And so it works well to draw out a branch. And as you get farther out, it, uh, I'll just try one. But we're going to, we would spend as much time as we needed to to finish this up now, but it's been fun to show you this basic technique of laying in your sky and your ground and then coming forward with the trees and finishing off with your birch trees. So we just take a little branch and we bring it out like that. And we take another branch, perhaps something like that, and we'll work on those branches. So it's been good to be here with you on Art 30, and I hope you'll join us again. Thank you.